So, a lot of you have noticed I haven't been answering comments, I haven't been uploading as frequently as I usually do. And why is that, right? Uh, a lot of people want to know. So the first thing that happened was my uncle passed away. And it was very sudden. It was very... Uh, he was diagnosed with cancer. And then it was like a couple weeks later he had passed away. And that was really hard to handle. And then on top of that, his funeral was on a Monday. The Thursday before... I was dropping my son off at his mom's. The whole family was together, me, Caroline, and my son. And I hit a deer. And the deer, it didn't total out Caroline's car, but it completely shattered the light assembly. The hood is curled under. The fender's all bashed up. The fender, the, the gap between the tire and the fender is a little bit wider than my thumb, which is actually... I'm thankful for, I'm thankful <laughs> that it's like that because I was able to drive it still. I drove it to drop off my son and then we drove it home. What's funny is on the way home, I had to slam on the brakes because I almost hit another deer. And so that was, that was tough because now uh, the vehicle is out of commission. Uh, it needs body work, it needs uh, light assembly. And the time, winter's coming, right? And with winter, we need reliable vehicles because winter eats vehicles alive. And so with the car the way that it was, we decided it'd be better to buy a different vehicle and then fix this one up to make it like our backup vehicle than it would be to spend all this time, money, and energy into fixing our current vehicle and then find out that, you know, maybe there's something deeper wrong with it that we still can't drive it. So we started shopping for another vehicle and that took all of our time, all of our time. It's crazy where I live. Well, the other thing is we didn't want to go to a dealership because dealerships, they like to rip you off in my opinion. Uh, they charge you way too much for what you're getting because they have overhead, right? They have to pay the they have to pay their sales guys. They have to pay for the lot rent or the mortgage, whether they own it or if they're renting it. They have to pay the utility bill. They got to pay, you know, all of these things, and so the all of those costs go into the vehicle that you are purchasing, and I can't afford to pay all of those things, and so. The other thing is we didn't want to take out a loan. Uh, we're trying to get out of debt, and so we didn't want to go further in debt to uh, buy a new vehicle. And so our price range was very strict <laughs> because it's all we had, and uh, it wasn't very large. And so uh, one of the say there's two sayings, there's two ways of looking at buying a used vehicle. Number one, uh, they say a little rust won't stop you from getting home, right? So essentially what that means is you have a vehicle that runs and drives exactly how it should, but it's rusty, right? And so, but if it runs and drives the way it should, it'll get you to and from. It'll get you from point A to point B, no problem. A uh, little rust isn't going to stop you from getting home, okay? The flip side of that is... Uh, you need something solid to hang the parts on. Meaning that no, it does not drive or run the way it's supposed to, but everything's solid. There's no rust. There's no, you know, the body is in good shape. So everything is solid. And so those parts that aren't working right, you can take them off and replace them. And then you're left with a really good vehicle. And the situation that we found ourselves in is that we live in a tiny little town where there are no, nobody around here is selling their vehicle. And so we had to go where there's the most amount of people. We had to go to the big cities where there's more people and more private sales. And what I learned 
is that people have become great photographers. Uh, it, it's crazy. When you look at the pic, like all of the vehicles we were looking at looked, according to the pictures, really good. Like really, really good. It wasn't until you zoomed in on the fenders and the underskirts and all the different parts, you really had to zoom in and look to where you would find, you know, and even then we'd be like, is that the person's reflection or is it a reflection of the tree or is it is it a reflection or is it actually messed up you know it was really hard to tell and then on top of that the descriptions will just be all like runs and drives does it run and drive good <laughs> does it run and drive like it's supposed to and so because everything the closest we were to vehicles in our price range that we were interested in was an hour and a half away so an hour and a half one way was the closest. And because it's an hour and a half away, you know, you don't want to look at just one vehicle. So we were trying to find multiple vehicles to look at. And luckily, we, the people that we messaged, because we messaged them before we would drive all the way to go look at them, most of them were very honest. Most of them were like, look, I don't know if it's going to make it an hour and a half home or two and a half hours home. Uh, especially in Minneapolis, most of the vehicles that were in our price range were in Minneapolis, which is two and a half hours away. And a lot of them were like, I don't, I wouldn't trust driving it the two and a half hours at home, or I wouldn't trust driving it at night the two and a half hours because we would have had to drive it at night. And so a lot of people were really honest, but a lot of people weren't. <laughs> and the people that weren't, man, you know, you look at the pictures and you study it the best you can and you read the descriptions and you mesh and jump and you, the message is, does it have any dash lights like the check engine light or the oil light, brake light, uh, traction control light? You know, you ask all these questions and they're like, oh, no, no, it's great. It's wonderful. It's perfect. And then you get there, the check engine lights on, the oil lights on, and you're all like, I thought you said there were no lights on. Well, yesterday there wasn't. It's like, okay <laughs> you know and then you're looking and then it needs brakes and uh, you go to start it and it won't start you got to jump start it in order for it to run and you know there's all these issues that are just kind of red flags and uh yeah I and mean, when you drive two and a half hours one way and you look at three vehicles and all of them are like that where they straight up just lied in the description it sucks, especially when you got to turn around and drive two and a half hours back. You know, we spent the whole day. We spent multiple whole days uh, driving down to Minneapolis, Fargo, uh, you know, all these different places just to find things that weren't anything like the description, which is it takes a lot out of you after a while, you know. But we did finally, we had to drive three hours one way. Three hours, we found a vehicle, we purchased it, three hours back, no check engine light, no anything like that. It needs brakes, it needs rotors, it needs tires, the rear suspension is going out. I think it needs a front wheel bearing. I don't know driver or passenger side, but I'm pretty sure it needs a wheel bearing. Uh, the... It might have other issues. The wheel lock assembly might be having issues. Uh, the other thing is it's a Nissan. Nissan is Japanese. Everything, since I've been working on my own vehicles, everything's been American. It's been Chevy, Dodge, Ford. And so I learn all of that. Well, this Japanese car has different, a lot of it's the same, but some of it is different. And now I have to relearn what all that stuff is for this Japanese vehicle. And so I've been doing that. Uh, the other thing is when you buy a vehicle and you hook a scan tool up to it, there's usually a, well, you'll, you either have two situations here. They either just cleared everything because they didn't want the check engine light on when you showed up. So they would go in with their scan tool and clear everything so that there's nothing to see and the check engine light goes off. And so you, there's either nothing there and then you get home and then everything that is there is wrong with the vehicle or 
the check engine light isn't on, but when you plug your scan tool in, there's like 20 different codes because they were fixed but never erased. And so they're just stored codes. And so the first thing I do when I buy a new vehicle is I go in, I make a report on the codes so that I have all the codes that are in there. And then I delete everything, everything, everything. And then I see which ones come back on. And so I have the original report of all the codes that were in it. And so I can pay attention to all of those things because if they start acting weird or if something weird is happening with those things, I know that they were an issue before. But the ones that come back, I know are real issues. They're current issues because if they were fixed, they wouldn't come back, right? Well, with this vehicle, I had, I think there were like 12 codes. I cleared them. Two codes came back, but none those two codes aren't from the original list. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what what's going on here? So I'm looking and I'm trying to figure that out and I'm trying to, I think one is a TPMS sensor, the right rear TPMS sensor. And so that's a tire pressure monitor sensor. And so we might have to change all four TPMS sensors, which isn't a big deal because it needs new tires anyway. And so there's, it's just a lot of, you know, it took a lot of time finding a vehicle took a lot of time, full days, going and looking at vehicles. On ev Like every single day off, we were in a different town somewhere looking at vehicles. And then now I gotta fix up and make sure that this thing's ready for winter, get my truck ready for winter, uh, get the Buick in a situation where uh, it's not gonna short out and everything because with the light assembly shattered like it is, uh, the wires are exposed and if snow gets in there and stuff, I don't want to deal with that. And so it's it's just a matter of getting everything prepped for winter, getting everything ready. So I'm still busy. I'm still trying to get it all squared away, but I feel I'm in a position right now where I can keep up. I can start answering some comments. I can start making videos again and I can kind of get back on schedule. One of the things that I did want to ask you guys about, because I know that the YouTube algorithm isn't going to share this video at all. This is going to go straight into the dark hole of the internet. But so the ones that are watching and have stuck around, I know that you actually do care about this channel. I know that you actually are here for all of the right reasons. And so what I've thought about doing is I thought about making a membership because I can do members only live streams. And so I can do a live stream with just the members and I don't have to worry about trolls and people jumping on and causing a ruckus. And then also I can filter the comments for members only. And so for my members, I can uh, answer all your comments first, right? And so all your comments I can answer right away. And then uh, I can do member only posts so I can post a uh, little like Facebook posts, but I'm here on YouTube, so I can make little posts. And uh, so you guys can, I can keep up to date with you guys. And then those will be members only and I can do polls, uh, member only polls. So I can ask you guys questions and you guys can uh, just click on which one you prefer. There's a lot of really cool things with members. And so I was thinking about doing that uh, let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in the comment section down below because if enough of you are interested, I'll definitely do it. Uh, but if nobody is going to do it, I don't think I'm going to spend the time figuring it out. But what do you guys want to see? That's the other thing. What do you guys want to see? What do you want to make videos on? Uh, sometimes I like making, because you guys will have me make a video. You're like, oh, I want to know your opinion on this right? And then I do a video on my opinion on this and then you guys leave your opinion in the comment section and I've actually learned a ton from you all. Uh, what, those are some of my favorite videos. Some of my favorite videos are you, you ask me to make a video not because you want my opinion but because you want to share yours in the comment section and uh, so yeah I, I like making those videos. I like learning from you guys. I've learned more 
being on YouTube than I ever did watching YouTube because I'll make a video sharing my thoughts and opinions and then somebody with way more experience than me will go in that comment section and be like, hey, you wanna know what? The way you're doing it is like the worst possible way of doing it. This way is way easier. And I'm like, that would be way easier. And it saves me a ton of time. It saves me a lot of energy. It saves me a lot of money. Uh, so I, I really like making those videos. Uh, I really, I've been blessed by not having a lot of trolls. Usually the, usually the people that are like, you're an idiot. And I go, why would, what makes this wrong? They go, this is exactly why it's wrong. And I go, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so yeah, they're, they're trolling at first, but they usually, well, not usually, there are some people that are just mean and that I'll never hear from again, but the ones that, there's a lot of them that actually know what they're talking about. And so I've learned so much from trolls um, it's, it's funny because they're like, that's the worst way of doing it. And then I'll, I'll respond with, how would you do it? And then I either never hear from them again. I lose the troll for life or it's somebody that knows what they're doing. And they'll be like, cause this is exactly why it's the dumbest way. And I'm like, Oh, I never thought of that. I should probably stop doing it that way. You know? So they're not actually a troll. They actually do know what they're talking about. And it's actually made my life easier. And so I, I encourage it. Uh, I like learning. I like, uh, if you can make things easier for me, I am not an ego type person, right? I'm a monkey see, monkey do kind of person. And if you have an easier way of doing it, I want to know it. I'm not, I don't know the best way of doing anything, right? I'm here to learn just like you guys are. And I think that's why this community does so well. I think that's why we get along so well. I think that's why the trolls don't stick around is because we are all, I'm, I'm in it just as much as you all are. So I'm, I'm just as eager to learn. I'm just as eager to ask questions and leave comments and or replies, uh, whatever I got to do so that I can learn and, uh, I can share that what I learned from you guys. I try to make videos on to help you because when they leave a comment, usually only I can see it, especially the replies. Unless you go through and you click the read replies on every single comment to see what they are, most people don't see them. And so if I can learn from you guys and then make a dedicated video, the video gets more views and so we can all learn together. And that, used, that was my goal from the very beginning. My very beginning, I used to always say, leave any knowledge or questions in that comment section because if you know something that I don't, I'd like to be filled in. And if you have a question, I probably have the same question or I might be able to answer that question and then that gives me video ideas. And so either way, if you have knowledge or questions, it benefits me huge. And uh, that's... I, I love learning. I love figuring out better ways of doing things. I like sharing that information with you all. And so I'm not going anywhere. Some of you are worried that the channel is dying. It's not dying. I'm not going anywhere. I just have to, there, I had other priorities. Those are kind of dwindling away and now I'm going to be back here making more videos. So Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking and sharing and subscribing. And I cannot wait to see you on my next video.